I'm Kate and welcome to VOL TV. Today we are discussing sexual health. Hello, my name is Johan. In this program we will be talking about a somewhat taboo subject, sexual health. Some maybe feel nervous or embarrassed to talk in detail about their questions, problems and opinions, but not us. We will be informing you of the best, best ways to protect yourself with guidance from professionals from the NHS. Also, we will be getting your views on the matter and to top it all off, a new volunteer, Luke, has started working on original music creation about STIs. The song is not finished, but there is a little taste. It is not one to miss, not anything to be ashamed of. Whether you're sexually active or not, it is important to know the potential dangers of unprotected sex. If you're under 25, listen up. As statistics show, you are the most vulnerable age group. So, so wrap, wrap it before, before you tap it. it. Now to our first video clip of the day, have a look at what the press and public think of sexual health. Run VT. Gonorrhea, chlamydia, herpes, chlamydia, uh, syphilis, chlamydia, gonorrhea, syphilis, syphilis, yeah, yeah, yeah. HIV, AIDS, uh, gonorrhea, chlamydia, crabs, uh, chlamydia, HIV, chlamydia, gonorrhea, AIDS, AIDS. <laughs> gonorrhea, herpes, there we go. Yeah. You can only get them through unprotected sex or anything like that. Um, but the sex that you get them from having sex? Uh, it gets them if you, don't use, if you don't use a condom. But you can get them even if you do use condom. Um, stopping HIV from being spread. Everyone's good for. Oh, I think there's probably about five or six of them. Is a male condom? Female condom? The pill? Domes, the pill, the implant, the injection. Yeah. Femidom. Femidom. It's a five. Statistically, I imagine it's a condom. Pill. Um, you've got you know implants. Condoms? Yeah. Condoms. Injections. Yeah. Injections. Lots of different ways. Uh, condom, female condom, oh, the yeah. pill, uh, the, the implant. implant. If you don't want to get pregnant. Uh, the, the male can use a condom and the female can use the pill. Um, it's under 25s at the moment, yeah, isn't I'm it? Sure. That's what they keep telling me on the news. Probably over like 20. Probably in 20s, uh, like 20s to 25, maybe. 18 people in the tw tw under 25. checks and stuff. It's not all as effective as the condom. I mean, obviously, if some most people like use the pill, but if maybe it's best to use like a condom and like but if you've got one pill as genetic well. issues or sometimes the pill makes yeah. you sick. So sometimes it's you can be allergic to condoms. Then. As yeah. Well, yeah. So it really depends on the person. Use protection all the time I'm okay. and always get checked out. Use not have sex at all. Yeah, yeah, don't have sex at all. Like, yeah. Probably not to have sex. Yeah, that's, that's probably that's the easiest the only way. 100% way. How to not have sex. No, you've been off sex. Um, you can't be 100% protected no, because really. don't have sex. <laughs> yeah, you best don't sleep with loads of strangers. Yeah. Use condoms. Yeah. Yeah. Try and find a partner and try and keep the number of partners down. And you're back with me and Johan. Any of those views or questions relate to you? Well, stay tuned because up next we have a very special guest, Vicky Newcomb, to help us with the trials and tribulations of sexual health. Hello and welcome to, v to Vault TV, Vicky. Hi. Why do you think the subject creates such embarrassment and shyness amongst young people? Well, I don't, people just seem to be embarrassed to talk about sex, but it's something that goes on, so really they shouldn't be embarrassed. Um, and I think that these days though it's becoming more open and young people are more uh, getting a little less shy I think about talking about it. From our research young people find that their parents are the hardest to talk to about sexual issues so who is the easiest? Well there's a lot of health professionals around that you can talk to about sexual health issues there's, um, there's youth workers, there's family, family planning nurses and the contraceptive clinics, your GP um, and if you're still at school, often there's uh, mentors at school and college that you can talk to 
school nurses. There's a lot of health professionals around that you can talk to and get good information. Mm, so should people believe everything they hear about sex? Probably not, no. <laughs> that, uh, that often that we find that what people hear in the, at school or from their mates is not always true and it can, it can scare people quite often. Um, so we prefer it if young people came to see health professionals and they'll get the right advice. If any of our viewers are having mixed or confusing thoughts about their sexuality, what can they do and who can they talk to? Well, in, here in Preston, there's, um, there's Urban Exchange that's uh, in the city centre here. And at Urban Exchange, they have a lot of prof health professionals there. There's a contraceptive clinic, there's the community screening office, and there's also all the uh, youth workers there. And there will be a youth worker that the people in the local area can talk to and help with their sexuality. Um, across the whole of central Lancashire, in Chorley, Leyland, Ormskirt, Skelmersdale, there are services, that, uh, connections where they can talk to youth workers about their sexuality and who can help them through a, what can be a very difficult part of their life. Well, if any of our viewers are thinking of getting tested, where should they go and how often? Um, I, I work for the Chlamydia Screening uh, Team, which we, uh, is a, a screening program for the 15 to 24 year olds, because as they said on that uh, film, that the most common age group for sexually transmitted infections is the under 25s, um, but it's not the only sexually transmitted infection. There is HIV, syphilis, gonorrhea, herpes, warts, trichomonas, there's a lot of other sexually transmitted infections. Um, here in Preston, very lucky, over in Urban Ex Exchange, there's a clinic called Tortwise. And in Tortwise, they have a GUM, which is the Genito Urinary Medicine Clinic. And there's a nurse there that people can access um, on a you know, walk-in basis, and they get tested for everything. There's also the GUM clinic at Preston Hospital that they can get tested for everything. Um, and in the locality, there's Chorley, Leyland, Ormskirt, Scansdale. There's the contraceptive clinics. You can go to your GP, and you can also access uh, chlamydia testing kits on on the on our website, which is uh, www.bestuno.co.uk, um, and you can go to every single uh, contraceptive clinic that there is in the central Lancashire area and access testing. How can we change the shy attitude of young people in relation to condoms when they're relatively free? Well, they are free, actually. They're not just relative. You can all the services that I've talked about just then. You can actually get condoms free, um, and I think that probably it it starts with education and it starts in school that you get used to um, normalising talking about using condoms and to and that um, try and get rid of some of the myths of condoms, which some people say that they don't like it because sex is not the same, um, that they can't feel anything. But, you know, but I think that if we start at the very beginning, the grassroots and education, people then will know a little bit more about uh, condoms and know that there's lots of different types and all the contraceptive clinics supply all the different types. There's novels and bobbles and different uh, flavours. There's a different, you know, there's lots of different types of condoms and there's one to suit everybody, really. Thank you very much. And now, over to the news with Janie. Hi, I'm Jane and this is your CSV News Broadcast. This week we have a few members of our CSV family out in Kiosk, Poland, taking part in the Youth Take On project. The project is about making tour guides for the cities of Preston and Kiosk, made by young people, for young people, about the places they would want to visit. Steph, Sam, Gemma, Holly, Rachel, Danny and Steve are going on a tour of Kiehl's with the guides that have been made for the city. Also, in the next couple of months, the guides from Kiehl's will be coming to visit us to do the same. You can check out the website www.youthtakeon.csvnw.org.uk to look at some of the guides that have already been made for both of the cities. In local community news, people in Preston are being asked to support Friends of Preston New Victoria, the old cinema which was closed in 1992. The group are asking for members to join to help support the group to secure the future of the building. The ballroom for the old cinema is still in use but is now known as the nightclub Lava and Ignite. 
Membership for adults is £5 and you can also sponsor a receipt for £200 or if that is too expensive for you, you can buy a brick for a pound. You can check out their Facebook site for, for more information on how you can get involved in this project. Just search for the new Victoria Action Group Preston. The University of Central Lancashire is already preparing for the 2012 London Olympics by welcoming one of Fiji's top athletes. Leslie Copeland is spending five weeks at UConn Sports Arena in preparation for the Games. He is said to be impressed with UConn's facilities and the coaching staff available. Copeland is here because of an agreement between the Oceania National Olympic Committees and the Northwest Development Agency to bring athletes from five oceanic countries to the region to train for the Olympics. Copeland and his trainer are here for five weeks and then will be back in 2011 and 2012 to acclimatise and prepare for the Olympics. And finally, there has been suspected UFO sightings in the Preston area. Mrs Knowles of Fullwood Preston is said to have seen last month 50 to 60 bright lights travelling east to west above homes in the Fullwood area. Mrs Knowles does say she doesn't believe in UFOs but couldn't think of another explanation and wanted to know what it was. It was also revealed this month in declassified government documents that many other Preston residents are believed to have had similar experiences including on the 17th of November 1996 when a large triangular UFO was seen over the south of the town. So if you see anything strange in the sky, contact your local MP.